This is the intriguing story behind what we decided to name our boat. We are the McKays. We plan on sailing to a hundred islands, and this is the beginning of our boating adventure. For those of you new here, we bought a boat named Chaos. It's very true that the name Chaos fits our family. There's 41 children on our boat right now. And situation. I put the rope around the thingy wrong a couple times. <laughs> the thingy. Uh huh. We've got a lot to learn. But we don't aspire to be the embodiment of chaos. We don't actually want to be defined as the chaotic sailing family. And names can define you. Studies have shown that your name may influence your behavior. The name of a boat is very important. It becomes your family name. Growing up, Dustin was a little boy from Dreamweaver, which was his family's boat, and his friends were Canadian Goose. Your boat name becomes your name. And so we decided to change the name of Chaos. This ended up to be expensive and very involved, and given the choice over again, we might have just stayed with the boat's original name out of convenience. But hey, now it's done. We are no longer the crew of Chaos. But what should we name our boat? This is no small question. Most sailors love puns. From peer pressure to seize the day to real therapy, there's no lack of puns in the sailing world. Along those lines, we thought we might name our boat Five Naughty Boys, but we decided that we didn't want to emulate that either. Other boats seem to tell a little joke or story like in a meeting. Along those lines, Dustin said we should name our boat Sleeping with Six Sailors, but I vetoed that one. We wanted our name to be meaningful and reflect something about us. Soon it became clear what our name should be, and it's because of a story that happened clear back in 2017. 2017 is when we first arrived in Vanuatu. We had immediately started construction on our house, which was right next to the house Dustin's sister Shira was building. Right when we arrived, Shira's house was not finished. So she was renting a house down the road. All right, we are going to Shira's old house. This is the house that she stayed at while she was getting her house done, uh, at her house built. And it is one of the most beautiful properties ever. And it has some very special pools that I want to show you. But this is an incredibly bumpy road. It is always bumpy and it's been raining recently. So it is extra bumpy. So this is gonna be a fun journey. where it is and there's no real um, addresses here. In fact, we go by the address where the trees split the road. That's our address. If I remember right, this is it, but I don't know. So one awesome thing about the area here in Afate is that all the people here, instead of having normal swimming pools, they have saltwater swimming pools and they just blast the coral so that they can have a swimming pool in the coral. And this is where we would spend our evenings the very first weeks that we were in Vanuatu. And it was so magical because in the evenings as the sunset was on the horizon, we saw fireflies and they would just rise up from the coral and just surround us and it was the most magical feeling in the world. Fast forward months later when we went to church. Hey, we actually made it to church. Our bus didn't lose a tire this week. And because they're building a new church building because the church is growing, we are meeting under Natangura in this awesome hut. So we meet in here, but we also meet over here under 
the um, under the bamboo because there's not enough places for all the kids. And so my kids go kind of crazy out under the bamboo because it's outside. And it's also all in Bishlama. There is no English. And that's the hardest part about Vanuatu for me is my kids not having primary in English. So we've had to step up our game on our um, devotionals. But um, they do sing primary songs in English and there's nothing sweeter than to hear all the little kids singing under a bamboo tree, I am a child of God. One Sunday, it was raining, downpouring, when in the middle of the meeting, a man dressed in camouflage from head to toe came in. He was carrying something that looked like a rifle tucked under his arm. I was a little intimidated. Who the heck was this guy? It turned out that he was an entomologist professor from Brigham Young University. And what I had thought was a gun was a butterfly net. His name was Seth and he ended up being a super nice guy. We invited him over for dinner and since I am a homeschool mom, when I heard that he was an entomologist, I asked him if he would teach my kids about bugs and boy, did he deliver. He gave a presentation to our homeschool group about the classification of bugs. He took us on a bug hunt. He was just a super cool guy and my kids loved him. As we sat around talking, we told Seth about the fireflies that we had seen down the road, and Seth was shocked. He said that he had just been to a worldwide firefly conference. Did you know those type of things even existed? Anyway, he had been told by the leading world expert on fireflies that there were no fireflies in Vanuatu. So when Seth said that there were no fireflies here, we're like, uh, we've seen them here. We know they're here and he believed us, but he said, well, then you gotta find some and put them in the freezer because I can't find them. It's the wrong time of year. After that, we kept our eyes open for fireflies, but he was right. The seasons had changed and we never saw fireflies again. Just a week before we went back home to Canada, we went on a special retreat as a family to the other side of the island to a resort called La Life. I don't have the original footage anymore, all I have is my old attempts at vlogging, so enjoy. The Life Resort, and over there they have glamping, where, <laughs> where our kids are going to camp. And then we have this beautiful place, but mommy and daddy are camping right here. <laughs> with a restaurant and room service and they even have that in over there at the campsite uh, a maid will come in in the morning and clean your tent so that's pretty exciting Abraham show me where you're gonna sleep tonight come and show me and William's gonna sleep there While we were there, Dustin and I went to enjoy the sunset by the coral and we noticed some larva glowing on the coral. We immediately thought of our anthropologist friend, Seth. So Dustin took this video. That's my mate. While I'm filming, I'm gonna now turn it on. Oh, wait, I can see the blinky. Where, now where'd the bug go? Oh yeah, there's the bug. You can see the little beetle thing. We took the larva and put it in our freezer like Seth had instructed, but we didn't think much of it as we headed back to Canada for the year of 2018. While we were enjoying our Canadian friends and the snow, Dustin got a message from Seth that said he was heading to Vanuatu with a bunch of students and wondered if they could stay at our house. We obviously let him and Seth and his assistants went around Vanuatu collecting specimens before returning home to the United States. 
A few months later, we returned to Vanuatu. Seth informed us that again, he was coming with another group of students. We were delighted this time we could be there to meet them. Seth's family came as well, and it was so fun to show Seth's family some of the parts of the country that we had come to love so much. entomologist students were some of the best people ever. One girl went into my bathroom and came out glowing. In her hand was the biggest bug ever. She said, look what I just found in your bathroom. We need to classify this guy. Who can help me? You can't have a better attitude than that when finding bugs in a stranger's bathroom. As we sat with the students, Dustin started talking with one of them. So uh, when I was talking to Seth's students when they came, one of them was like, oh, you were the one that took the video? That video is how we got our grant for all of us to come to Vanuatu. So that was kind of cool. This seemingly insignificant video that Dustin took was the catalyst that let Seth get funding from the university to look for fireflies in Vanuatu. It turns out that together we had discovered a new species of firefly actually two species that had never been documented before. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that these fireflies are the only kind that pupate on coral. Seth or anyone from the entomology group, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Sadly, they did not name the fireflies after us. They were called Atifella marginis, um, Atifella, Marginos. But I think we can agree that the common name of these fireflies are the McKay fireflies. So in honor of these Vanuatu fireflies that we helped bring to the notice of the scientific community, as I'm sure you can guess by now, the name we decided to call our boat is Firefly. the McKay's, but now we are also proudly the family of Firefly. Do you brown coats know the other reason we named our boat Firefly? Comment below if you get the joke. Subscribe to join us next time to see how we survive heading offshore as a family for the very first time. Our first day of sailing is coming to an end and uh, I've already gotten sick, I've already gotten a sunburn. I haven't gotten sick. <laughs> so, I like it. hey, there you go. <laughs>